They are the most important tool that we have to give our first impression. As we know, first impressions really count. The average recruiter only takes six seconds to look at our resume. It's not very long at all. So we want to know how we're going to end up in this yes pile rather than a large stack of no's. So as we can see, we've got a great example here. It's one page, but two pages is also acceptable. We've got the contact information at the top. It's okay to have your education there because what you really need to ask yourself is what's more remarkable, my education or my employment history? Well, what I really like about this CV is that rather than just a mini job description, they've actually used accomplishment statements to talk about what they've achieved in their jobs and their results. They've done this by using action verbs. These action verbs describe their accomplishments and results in the jobs that they've done. These strong action verbs are throughout this skill section and profile. Another example of a CV that I think is really good is this one. It's got clear results throughout in the work experience and they've been able to really quantify what they've achieved throughout her work experience in the title Relevant Accomplishments. She's really been able to quantify her achievements in her past experience. In terms of cover letters, you should send one with every application, even if the company hasn't requested it. It's your opportunity to sell yourself, to show how qualified you are and that you're worthy of an interview. While a CV talks about your past accomplishments and results, a cover letter makes connections between you and the company and what they need. So now we're going to talk about the basic elements of a cover letter. First, you have the greeting. You need to address the correct person properly in the right tone. Secondly, the opening. You must write a personable paragraph relating your skills back to the job. Third, you have the hook. This is where we highlight our achievements and relate them back to the job. Four, don't forget the skills, but make sure that they're relevant. Lastly, we close our cover letter. We recap our skills and suggest why we're a good fit for the role. Remember, no matter how strong you are as a candidate with how much education or experience, a poorly written cover letter will be a barrier to getting an interview. It's your first impression. Make it count.